Welcome to the latest episode of the Informing Choices mini pod. With the recent controversy surrounding the government's apparent backing off the pace at which the UK anticipates meeting net zero, I wanted to take a broader look at the issue. But I didn't want to do so by jumping on the scare bandwagon. I wanted to do so by offering a carrot, if that's not mixing my metaphors. Climate change is obviously an issue never far from many people's minds, whether it's the personal choices that we might make, whether it's the design and development of emerging mitigation technologies, or whether it's the design and implementation of government policy to motivate us to change our behaviour for the good of the planet. So in this episode of the podcast, I wanted to take us beyond net zero to 2060, 10 years after the target date for achieving net zero. And I wanted to do five things. Initially, set some context, then think about the high level benefits of having achieved net zero. Look at some of the enabling technologies. Consider the changes in people's work and home lives. And then finally, introduce you to the Thompsons, our family from 2060. So how has life changed following many countries' achievement of their net zero targets? Well, environmentally, achieving net zero has slowed the rate of climate change, leading to increasing stabilisation of global temperatures and a reduction in extreme weather events. Reduced emissions have led to a healthy biosphere, including in the oceans, forests, wildlife habitats, thereby improving overall biodiversity. It's amazing how fast nature recovers. Economically, the shift towards renewable energy and carbon neutral technologies has spawned new, industri new industries and new jobs. It's reduced dependency on fossil fuels and has made economies more resilient against, for example, fluctuations in energy prices. Enterprises have been focusing on developing sustainable business models by incorporating sustainability at the heart of what they do, at the heart of their operations. It's no longer a nice to do. It's absolutely essential for brand value. From a technological perspective, an emphasis on sustainable technology has yielded innovation in energy storage, renewable energy and circular economy practices. Smart urban infrastructure, smart cities, including efficient transportation systems, have become ubiquitous with the focus away from fossil fuels and a rapid decline in private car ownership. Lower air and water pollution have led to significant improvements in public health metrics, such as lower rates of respiratory and cardiovascular disease, and had a positive impact on average life expectancy. The efforts to reduce emissions have coincided with initiatives to reduce social inequality by improving access to clean energy and reducing the presence of harmful particulates, particularly in areas of disadvantaged communities. With cleaner air and increasingly stable climate, overall quality of life is improving, particularly for vulnerable populations. Indeed, the collective accomplishment of meeting such targets has engendered a more future-oriented and sustainably minded society. So, which technologies have and continue to play a significant role in achieving net zero? The confluence of technologies guided by regulatory frameworks and supported by public awareness and corporate initiatives have been essential in achieving net zero emissions. In energy generation, a portfolio approach has delivered reliable, clean energy to those who need it, where they need it, when they need it. Advanced photovoltaic cells, solar thermal technologies have contributed a significant portion of energy generation, even in more northern latitudes like the UK. New generation wind turbines, including on and offshore installations, have played a key role. 
advanced nuclear reactors have played a key role in ensuring supply of reliable, clean energy. But not just the multi gigawatt generating stations, but also a network of small modular reactors, so called SMRs, have played a key role. Upgraded turbines and dams, where hydroelectric generation is viable, along with an innovative tidal energy solutions, have also supplemented the energy grid. In mobility, Electric vehicles have seen widespread adoption, many of them now autonomous with fast charging capabilities. Of course, hydrogen fuel cells have been especially relevant for heavy duty and long distance transportation, buses, lorries. Urban centers have comprehensive, efficient public transport systems powered by renewable energy. Micromobility solutions like electric bikes and scooters are also playing their role in last mile connectivity. With aviation for a number of years, the bad guys of the emissions debate, biofuels and synthetic fuels have replaced conventional aviation kerosene. Sustainable aviation fuel is a phrase no longer used. It's all sustainable aviation fuel. Advanced aerodynamics, uh, lighter materials, real-time data analytics have optimized flight paths and minimized energy usage. And for certain types of cargo and leisure travel, airships have made a comeback. For short haul and lower capacity flights where surface travel is not plausible, electric and hydrogen powered aircraft dominate the market. Increasing investment in rail has shown significant growth in electrified high-speed rail routes, eliminating many flights within countries and even shorter international routes, particularly across the European Union, for example. Electrical vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, so-called eVTOL, um, offer point-to-point -point short distance travel within and across urban areas, alleviating road traffic and associated emissions. At sea, Zero emission ships, vessels powered by hydrogen fuel cells or ammonia are commonplace, eliminating the substantial emissions from conventional marine fuels. Some ships feature sail systems that generate additional thrust and solar panels that provide auxiliary power. In many cases, remote our autonomous operation of cargo ships has increased efficiency and reduced the environmental impact and maintenance of operation. In parallel with these changes, advances in virtual reality and the growth of the metaverse has made virtual travel far more appealing, reducing the need for actual air travel and associated emissions. In the manufacturing sector, advanced materials like carbon fiber composites and nanomaterials have replaced more energy intensive alternatives. Energy efficient processes, including 3D printed and AI optimized supply chains have reduced industrial emissions, as has more localized productions for many products using adaptive manufacturing techniques, for example but also systems for recycling and upcycling materials has limited waste and reduced the need for new resource extraction. Agriculture has also changed. Drones, sensors and artificial intelligence are enabling more efficient use of land, water and fertilizers, leading to increased yields. Vertical farms are commonplace, using soilless farming techniques such as hydroponics, aquaponics and aeroponics. Plant-based and lab-grown in vitro meat have eliminated most of the emissions associated with livestock farming. Meanwhile, carbon sequestration through advanced farming techniques are capturing more carbon in the soil, acting as a carbon sink together with rewilding projects and the nurturing of mycelium networks. So what changes have we seen in people's homes, how new homes are being built, how old homes have been retrofitted with net zero friendly appliances 
and building materials. Our homes in a post net zero world have changed significantly as well. Smart home energy management systems control heating, cooling and lighting to maximize energy efficiency. Energy efficient and solar powered appliances are the norm, reducing household energy consumption. Smart water management systems and water saving appliances are standard, reducing water waste and the energy needed for water heating. Homes are built with sustainable materials using eco-friendly, renewable and recyclable materials such as hempcrete or reclaimed wood. The architecture itself focuses on energy efficiency, utilising natural light, facilitating natural ventilation. Modular prefabricated and 3D printed methods that minimise waste and are more energy efficient are used. The incorporation of living plants into the building structure helps to provide natural insulation and carbon sequestration in many cases, particularly in larger commercial buildings. New homes come with solar panels, small wind turbines or other on-site renewable energy sources as standard. Existing and older housing stock has been retrofitted with advanced insulation materials like aerogel to improve energy retention. In parallel, outdated heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems have been replaced with energy efficient models that utilise heat pumps or geothermal energy where possible. Many homes have been fitted with home battery systems to store excess energy from renewable sources for later use and some even connect to smart grids that optimise energy distribution and allow for energy sharing amongst neighbours. Double or triple glazed windows have replaced the vast majority of single pane variants to improve thermal performance. And for those with green fingers, urban gardening and urban micro farming in rooftop gardens use hydroponic systems to grow their own food. So how have changes to work practices contributed to achieving net zero targets? Well, these changings to work paradigms have played a significant role. And to some extent, they were really triggered by the COVID pandemic back in 2020. The acceptance of remote and hybrid working has dramatically reduced energy use relating to commuting, cutting down on the use of fossil fuels, and it's led to an explosion of local shared workspaces with previously redundant office buildings and stores finding a new lease of life. The new norm has influenced home design as well, which now include more dedicated workspaces, as well as integrated technology to support digital and virtual collaborative working. With fewer people commuting to offices daily, companies have significantly downsized their office space, thereby reducing their energy needs. In turn, this has driven a new coffee shop culture outside of city centers, and back to where we used to consider towns as part of the commuter belt or dormitory towns. The adoption of digital documentation and communication has significantly reduced the need for paper and the widespread adoption of virtual meeting platforms has seen the need for business travel reduce significantly, lowering emissions from air and road transport. Office buildings use smart systems for lighting, heating and cooling to optimise energy use, while the adoption of energy efficient computers, servers and other office equipment also play their part in a lower energy world. At some companies, the ability to stagger work hours has reduced some of the strain on public transport and energy grids during peak hours, allowing for more efficient use of energy. Meanwhile, some employers have implemented four day working weeks with the dual benefit of not only reducing energy consumption in offices, but also cutting down on energy consumption through commuting. Elsewhere, 
co-working spaces have become far more popular, especially in suburban and rural areas, reducing the need for long commutes to city centres. Companies have also implemented training programmes on best practice for energy conservation, waste management and sustainable commuting options, whilst also offering incentives for employees who carpool, cycle or use public transport, thereby reducing individual carbon footprints. As a matter of policy, where physical travel is essential, companies opt for transportation options with lower carbon footprints or offset the emissions through certified programmes. So, let me introduce you to the Thompsons. Ella is 42, an urban planner. Oliver is 43, a software engineer. Aaron and Hudson, 16 and 14 respectively, are high school students living in a suburban community on the outskirts of London in the UK. So let's take a look at their morning routine. Ella wakes up to the soft glow of natural light filtering through the smart windows, which adjust their opacity based on the time of day. Her wearable health monitor synced to her biometrics gently vibrate to indicate optimal wake up time based on her sleep cycle. Oliver and the kids are already awake. The house's integrated AI assistant has coordinated everyone's schedules to optimise energy use. Downstairs, the kitchen is a marvel of efficiency. Solar powered appliances prepare a nutritious breakfast sourced from local vertical farms. Oliver enjoys a cup of lab grown coffee produced with minimal water and land use. The kids grab algae based smoothies, high in nutrients, but with a much smaller carbon footprint than dairy. What about home and school? Ella's home office is a capsule of sustainable design, from the recycled wood desk to the energy efficient computer powered by the home's solar grid. As an urban planner, her role in designing net zero communities is now a well-established role, and she connects with her team via holographic conferencing. Oliver, a software engineer, specialises in developing AI algorithms for efficient energy management. He heads to a co-working space 10 minutes away, travelling in a shared autonomous electric vehicle. The co-working space is a model of sustainable architecture, built from biomaterials and powered by renewable energy. Aaron and Hudson attend a nearby school designed as a living lab of sustainability. The school's rooftop solar panels and the wind turbines generate more electricity than the school actually consumes, with the surplus fed back into the community grid. Lessons in climate science and sustainability are integrated into the curriculum, training the next generation for continued stewardship of the planet. What about the afternoon and leisure time? Well, Ella breaks for lunch and enjoys a meal with Oliver, who has returned home during his flexible lunch hour. The food is either homegrown in their hydroponic garden or sourced from local bio farms. The food waste is compacted and converted into bioenergy through a community program. In the afternoon, Aaron attends an after school program focused on environmental journalism, part of his school's initiative to equip students with the skills to communicate the importance of sustainability. Hudson, meanwhile, is at a robotics club where they're building drones for monitoring wildlife habitats. And their evening and family time. Well, for dinner, the Thompsons use their 3D food printer to create a nutritious plant-based meal. Afterwards, the family gathers in the living room where the smart home system has adjusted lighting and temperature to optimal comfort and energy efficiency. The walls are coated with air purifying paint and that absorbs CO2 and releases oxygen, contributing to the favourable atmosphere. 
Oliver and Ella discuss a neighborhood meeting about an, implementing a new rainwater harvesting system. Aaron shares an article he's writing about youth activism in climate change, whilst Hudson shows off a new app he's developed that gamifies reducing household energy usage. And so it's bedtime. As the family prepares for bed, their home automatically switches to nighttime mode, reducing energy consumption to a bare minimum. Even their electric vehicle parked on the driveway contributes to their energy efficient lifestyle by feeding stored energy back into the grid during peak demand hours. Before bed, Ella checks her dashboard summarizing the family's energy usage their carbon offset contributions and sustainability metrics for the day. It's a fulfilling end to another day in a world where living sustainably is no longer just a dream, but it's the norm. In this post net zero world, the integration of sustainable practice is seamless, touching every aspect of the Thompson family's life. Technological innovation, Policy shifts and societal values have converged to make sustainability not just an aspiration, but a lived reality, shaping the spaces where they live, work and learn. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching or listening this episode of the Informing Choices mini pod. Please do let your friends and colleagues know about the podcast and I'll be back with another episode for you very soon.